Good evening, everyone. I am so excited to be here with all of you. We are going to discuss a topic very important to me, which is HIV prevention. Dr. Charla, how are Hi. you? Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? I am amazing even more now that I see you and that we are connected. I've been so, oh my God, I've been so thrilled for this conversation, not only because since the day we had our call, I was so, you know, like inspired by you. I always love to see, you know, women doing such an amazing work, especially women of color. We've talked about this in the call. It's so important. Representation matters. So thank you so, so much Absolutely. for being with me today. Thank you, Candy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. yes. So we are going to talk about a topic that it's still in our communities taboo, but I think it's time that we dip mystify and destigmatize this conversation, especially because the best bet is prevention, right? And um, many of us think it's never going to be us, but the reality is that there's certain things that give us more chances of, you know, getting infected as where we live, right? Our location, our zip code. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit more about that? And especially the metro areas where we are seeing a more precedence with HIV. Yeah, Candy. So I know you're you're in New Jersey, right? Well, I, I'm my a huge part of my community is in New York, New Jersey, and Philadelphia. Uh, so I feel very go. close to protecting them, Absolutely. you know. So yes. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm glad you're here because, you know, the HIV rates are high where you live, right? And, and it really matters. Where, where you live absolutely affects your risk of getting HIV because if you live in an area where either a lot of people are acquiring HIV or a lot of people are just living yeah. with HIV, think about it, Candy. Your chances of encountering a sexual partner living with HIV are just simply mm. higher. That yes. just makes sense, right? Yes. And so it could be one partner or you could have a hundred partners. Who knows? The chance of that one partner being infected yeah. in New York, New Jersey, or Philadelphia is yeah. much higher than it is in North Dakota. You know yes. what I mean? So we have to start thinking about our risk in terms of geography yeah. and where we live. It's, it's very vital. It's not only our behaviors, but it's also sort of the, I call it the density of HIV in our sexual networks. How many people are likely to have HIV exactly. in the network that we interact with? Exactly. And there's so, it, it's so important that we talk about because the higher, the higher the precedence of HIV, it, it, the higher our chances, right? But also I think that especially as women, we, I, I, would, I would say this is such a big myth and, and we kind of, went over that that we women we think that if we just have one partner if we are married um that i shouldn't care or be worried about it and we know because of the data and the statistics that that's not the case can you talk a little bit more about that yeah absolutely candy and i can really get on a soapbox about this because i feel very strongly <laughs> about the fact that women often have very uh what we call inadequate yeah. risk perception right women underestimate their risk of hiv and other stds all the time and that's because for a woman their risk is often more intimately related to their partner's behavior not yes. so much their own right yeah yes. and candy do we know everything that our partners are doing are we with them 24 7 24 hours of the day how no. many of us can say that <laughs> like it's it's unfortunate but no we, we, we don't that's the truth yeah. And so I think for women, I, I counsel women that I see, listen, if there is any doubt in your mind, if you cannot sit here yeah. and vouch for me for your partner's behavior 100% of the time, and you can't tell me everything that they're doing, yeah. if I even see slight hesitation, Candy, yeah. I jump on it and I'm like, preps yeah. for you. Yes. Preps for you. Yes. And, yeah. and, and I'm glad that you mentioned prep because many of us think that either we have to be abstinent, like, and, and we've talked about this 
sex is good. We should not feel ashamed of expressing ourselves, especially when we're younger with, you know, do whatever makes you feel good. If you're not hurting anybody, go for it. But just know that, you know, you need to take care of yourself and to, you know, it's part even of self care. So there's something called prep that people can discuss with their healthcare providers and to help them walk me through like I'm five years old. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Ms. Kenya, I'd be happy to walk yeah. you through a brief summary of PrEP, yeah. right? And so PrEP is, is the use of, of medications generally in the antiviral class. Mm -hmm. um, and it is taken by someone even before they become exposed to HIV, right? So PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis and the pre stands for before, yeah. okay? So before you even get exposed, you can take medication to prevent mm -hmm. sexual acquisition of HIV or, or just lower your risk of lower getting risk. through sex. And PrEP also, by the way, Candy, also works to lower the risk of getting HIV if your risk factor is injection drug use. So we've studied PrEP in both settings and it works in both of those groups. Okay, okay. so it means that if I'm not a carrier, but I'm sexually active or I'm not a person who's maybe used condoms or recently had an STI or have different partners, that is something that I could do to prevent or lower my chances or even if i'm married and we talk about this and we cannot account for everybody's <laughs> behavior we could take this absolutely can the prep is for all sexually active adolescents and adults like you and said adults. it best right yes. prep is for everyone who's sexually active mm -hmm. you have to be at least 12 for certain you know forms mm -hmm. of prep, mm -hmm. okay and you have to be a certain weight but yeah. i mean Everyone who's having sex deserves to talk about whether PrEP is right for them yeah. with their healthcare provider, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, people's primary care providers should be the, the first point of contact uh, because as you said, PrEP is it, about prevention, right? About and, and that is a part of primary care, you know? And so that's why I, I feel very strongly that if people don't have a primary care provider that they feel that they talk to about PrEP, they should probably just find another one. Yes. Yes, that, that is also open and, and doesn't exactly. have, doesn't project those taboos onto exactly. us, which is so important, exactly. especially Dr. Sharko, because we've talked about how in my communities of, you know, Latinos, Hispanic and black communities, also we see higher chances and we see more prevalence. And then how do we navigate that, you know, as, as uh, uh, people in these communities and you know, what can be done to address those challenges? Yeah, I think PrEP is a tough topic, uh, especially in the Latino community, as you said, you know, because there are, there are certain, uh, I think, things uh, about communities of color uh, and certain stigmatizing thoughts that people have about PrEP from those yeah. communities. You know, I'll give you some examples. The data we've looked at, you know, how people feel about PrEP in the Latino community. A lot of people think, that PrEP is for people living with HIV. Yes. Right? A lot of people think that if you're a man taking PrEP, you must be gay or bisexual. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that if you take PrEP, oh, you must be having sex with everyone, that you're that you're promiscuous, mm -hmm. right? Sort of sort of this sort of slut shaming uh, mm -hmm. that going on with PrEP. And then in the Latino community, Candy, I don't have to tell you, but Catholicism is the dominant religion, right? And, when, and like we all know how sticky yeah it gets yes. with religion and sexual health and sexual wellness and liberation. Yeah. And so, you know, I think for all of those reasons, you know, PrEP has been, uh, you know, underutilized uh, in certain communities. And as you correctly pointed out, it's a real shame because these are communities that are disproportionately impacted by HIV in the United States, you know? And so Correct. in terms of what we can do, because that was your follow-up question, mm -hmm. like, what should we do about the fact that our Latino community is not using uh, PrEP yeah. the way they could, right? Because guess what? Like 31% of new infections in the most recent surveillance report were in the Latino yes. community, despite oh, the gosh. fact that 
the U.S. population, Latinos do not account for 31% of the U.S. population, but yet they account for 31% of new infections. That's crazy, yeah. right? Like that's, that's a serious yeah. mismatch. So, you know, obviously targeted education, I think we need to have talks with our religious leaders. Yes. And I don't know who wants to take that on, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think that that definitely needs to happen. And I, I would love to see Candy more peer support in the Latino community. Like we need to increase the Latino HIV workforce, yes. right? Because we yes. tend to trust each other. Yeah. And we tend to listen to each other, yeah. you know? And so I think that those are, are some things that, that may make an impact, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's going to take a community effort yeah. for sure. Yeah, and I think having this type of conversations that we're having, um, I, I think that is so important that the people who are listening to this message see faces like yours and like mine. Because again, we go back to the, the representation matters. And sometimes, it, even as sad as it feels, it, it, you need one of your people telling you and letting you know like, hey, you don't need to feel ashamed. Absolutely. And these are options. Actually, you know, I talk a lot about health, wellness, longevity. HIV is one of the main culprits on our society, you know, and we want to change that. And longevity, the years that we have, it is not only quantity, but quality. Absolutely. And I think that PrEP is a beautiful, um, you know, tool that we can use, but we need to create more awareness. And that's why I'm so thankful for you know, the work that you do and this conversation that we're having, thanks to being Dico, 